Hey, what's up guys? This is Alex from Apri.io. And in this video, we are going to cover the main features of the Apri.io platform you get access to right after you sign in. This is a video explaining what the Apri.io dashboard is about. And if you're new to Apri.io, we highly recommend that you watch it before you start building your first app. So when you've just signed up for Apri.io, you will be first landing on this page, account. There are also more tabs over here that represent the main features of Apri.io, like apps, databases, server code, and others. And basically, we are now going to cover all these components of the platform, and then we'll dive into some of the details for main components and main features. Note that you can always access more information by clicking the links on the page header. For example, the upper left button will redirect to the Apri.io main page. What's new will open our help center. Docs will redirect to our platform welcome page. Blog opens the link to Apri.io blog entries and get help will provide a form you can send if you have any questions or experience problems while building your app. If you scroll down, you can get access to the additional links where you can learn more about our app builder and the backend services our platform offers. Check the list of our customers and view case studies and testimonials. Review our current pricing and plans and the mobile app development services we deliver. There is also a link to our FAQ page and the Contact Us button. Additionally, you will find the links to our privacy statement and terms of use documents right here. As you can see, after you sign up to our two-week trial, you're assigned to the default admin role and you have access to all the platform tabs that represent the main features of Apri.io. Let's switch to the Apps tab and check what it's all about. The Apps tab gives access to one of the main instruments you will use for app development, Apri.io Visual App Builder. Any app created from under this tab will be instantly opened in the App Builder where you can customize the app UI and logic. After that, it can be connected to the backend, tested, debugged, and finally exported. Actually, in this tab, the client part of your entire application is stored, something that gets published to an app store and then gets installed on the device. Right now, you can see that the page shows no apps or plugins you can work with. And all you can do is click the links to the resources to get help in building your first application. To create a new app, click Create New App, select the framework needed, for example Ionic 5, and enter the app name. Let it be New Ionic 5 App. Now, confirm the action, and a new page with the Visual App Builder will open giving you access to all of its options. This is our Visual App Builder, the heart of the Apri.io platform, and the main app building tool where you are actually building the app UI by using simple drag and drop. Before you start with the defining your first application, you will see the only page that opens by default, the start page, featuring some useful references. The content buttons with the links to our recent featured video and our step-by-step -step getting started tutorial also, here you will find the links to our most recent blog posts, so we can definitely recommend that you keep an eye on those as well. The navigation buttons below will redirect you to the resources like getting started guides, tutorials, documentation and videos. It's good as those are always available if you need more help. Our app builder is the place where you actually build your app, its pages, navigation and logic, you customize it as much as you want and so on. And of course, you then connect the app to the needed backend and we will demonstrate how to do it in the end of this video. When you are finally done, you would click export and select how you would like to export the resulting app. And this is where you would build the binary file. You can get the binary file downloaded to your computer and then publish it to an app store, Google Play or the Apple App Store, and that's actually how you publish the app. Our app builder functionality is covered in a lot more detail in this getting started with Ionic visual app builder overview video, and you can also find the link to this video in the description section below. But as this video is featuring the Apri.io platform dashboard, let's exit the app builder by clicking close. You will see now that the apps tab has one app listed with the Ionic 5 label that we have just created, new Ionic 5 app. Also, the default start page is now replaced by the much more informative view. 
you can see that more stuff is shown here now which allows you to manage your first project. For example, create project versions or restore the old version of the project, share the project or publish it to your custom domain or appri.io domain. You can go to the push notifications tab to enable push notifications for your app so the, the pushes are sent to your users. You can also send targeted push notifications or filter by users and only send the message to a particular group. On the apps page, you can also define the customer console setting or jump to the app permissions. That's actually available on every component like databases or API Express projects. And this is to help you work in the team. So if you have two or more people working on the project, you can share resources, assign roles and set permissions to access this particular app. Let's also take a moment to look at the plugins section below. It is still empty, but it will list your private plugins that are actually reusable components or templates once they are created by you. To do it, you will need to create an app first. And once you have an app or some basic functionality that you would like to make into a template, so you can take this app and export it or part of it as a plugin. And that's basically becomes a reusable component or a template. So that's what the plugin is for. Now, if you go to the databases tab, you will see a very similar default start page again. Links to our getting started tutorials, documentation and videos. If the apps page is for the app UI, the stuff that will run on your device, the databases tab is for a cloud database that you can use to keep any app data you will ever need for your application. Every new database you create is automatically exposed as a REST API. Let's create a new database and name it, for example, MyFirstDB. Note that in this step, you can also import your database from a backup if you already have some. The collections tab opens with three predefined collections or tables on the left that are basically available out of the box in every new database. As you can see, the UI is very similar to what we had under the apps tab. Once you've created a new database and or collection, you get more settings or features over here. For example, just like with apps, you can go to the versions tab and create different versions of your database or rollback if you need to. You can enable social login into your app, for example, if you want to allow login with Facebook or Google. It is done under this social connections tab. Setting permissions is also available. Click settings to open even more options, setting session expiration time, managing your API keys, and so on. Let's go back to the collections view. The predefined collections are users collection that is for managing app users, files used for uploading files, and devices is for push notifications and in particular allows sending targeted push messages. Now let's quickly create the entry for the first user of our database. Just click the plus row button, enter the name and the password you like. Creating database entries for other collections is equally simple. And of course, you can create one or more custom collections, for example, orders. Once you confirm this action, it appears under the collection section on the left and you get access to more collection options like setting security or managing indexes. If you need to create a new database or get to the list of your existing ones, go back to the databases dashboard that will allow you to manage your databases list via the web interface. Just click the blue arrow next to the DB name and select back to list. On the dashboard, you can create a new database, view the list of existing databases, open and edit a database, view statistics and report for any database or all your databases. That's it for the short overview of the databases tab. And if you'd like to get more details about how to work with databases and their collections, you can find related videos on our YouTube channel and in the description section below. Let's now go to the server code tab. So what SC component does is allows you to write custom app logic, on the server using JavaScript. And of course, the key here is that you don't have to maintain any servers. It's all done in the app cloud. And again, what you can see there is the link to the getting started tutorial and some other help stuff similar to what we already saw before for the apps and databases tabs. 
to create a brand new script, just click Create Script, give it a name, for example, my first script, and save. There is a default script that can, of course, be customized. And again, you get a bunch of features here to work with this particular script. The server code can have APIs so it can access the databases or send push notifications. You can easily connect to some third-party API by using the snippets on the right. Let's clear the default code and add the send Gmail snippet by clicking insert. You will then need to insert your Gmail username and password into the script and then test it under the run tab. You can also set the script parameters if needed under this corresponding tab. In addition to being a very powerful environment where you can write custom logic, every script, just like every database you create with Epri.io, automatically becomes a RESTful endpoint, and you can see the URL right here. More settings can be found over here. For example, the Trace tab is for debugging so that you can see error messages. The Dependencies tab is where you can define the libraries your script depends on. And you're also free to create libraries so that you can get reusable components that can be used in a number of scripts. Again, versions and permissions. The same thing we just saw with apps and databases. And jobs. Under this tab, you can actually schedule a script to run periodically, for example, once a day. If you want to learn more about how to work with scripts, check our server code getting started video. All right, let's switch to the Secure Proxy tab. Secure Proxy has two main features. The first, it helps to cross domain calls, and the second, it allows keeping sensitive app data on the server, such as API keys, URLs, and others. Something that you probably don't want to keep on the client for security reasons. To create a new proxy, click Create New Proxy and give it a name. And again, you'll get a similar UI with information and settings located here. To go back to the proxies list, you just select this drop down list and click Back to List. Good. Now it's time we review the API Express page. API Express is another server-side component and it is a great tool if you need to integrate external data sources. For example, expose an appri.io DB or your own external relational database via REST APIs. To create your first REST API, you will need to create an API Express project. To do it, simply click Create New Project button, enter the project name, for example, My First Project, and enter an optional description. Then click the Create button. Now you can manage your project APIs, keys, settings, permissions, and check statistics. Inside the project, you are free to create one or more folders that will allow you to reorganize your APIs by clicking the New Folder link. You can automatically connect to a relational database or appri.io database and expose the database via the REST API. And if you need to build some custom service, it is also possible. Click New Service and confirm you need a custom service. This will open the Visual Service Builder where you can build a really sophisticated custom service. The two circles here are service input and output. And you can drag and drop, for example, the SQL component that will allow writing a custom SQL query. And if you need to invoke a REST service, you can drag a REST component to be able to connect to some external REST service. Let's add a script component, for example. A lot more stuff can be done here, even using the fork. And what is really nice for the outside world that basically looks like a simple REST API. Let's click Save and then Close to go back. Now you can view the list of all the REST APIs in this project. Now let's go back to the API Express dashboard and review another important feature of this service. API Express allows connecting to a database and exposing it via REST APIs. In order to do that, the first step you will need to do is create a database connection. With API Express, you can select to connect to your own external relational database or create a connection to your existing appri.io database. So let's do it for our MyFirstDB database that will appear on the drop-down list after you select the appri.io database connection type. There are some more settings you will need to define to make the service work properly. So please check our documentation to learn how to connect to both database types. 
There we have specific examples of connecting to popular external databases like Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, Amazon AWS RDS, or Postgres hosted on Heroku. Let's jump to the Resources tab now. This tab has three main features. The first one is Certificates, and this is for building a binary for Android and iOS. You can keep your certificates here. Certificates can be imported or automatically generated in the case of Android. So let's see how easy it is to create an Android certificate. Click Generate Certificate and provide the security password. Well, we have just generated a certificate and can now use it to package the app for Android. Here, you can also import an iOS certificate. Click the Import Certificate link to upload the certificate from your desktop. Once the file and platform are chosen, type the certificate name and its password. Click Import Certificate to upload the file. The imported certificate will get listed on the left. Then, there is a webhooks feature, so that, for example, when you create a brand new app, you can set up a webhook that will send a request to another system and tell that system that a new app was created. It's the way to integrate AppRay.io with other third-party or outside systems. And the third and a very popular feature is adding Cordova plugins. These are extensions that you can create and then add to your app. So this view right here will list your own private plugins as well as the core Cordova plugins added to your account. You can add more Cordova plugins if you click Import Cordova plugin and then upload a Cordova plugin.zip file to your account. Or specify the Git repository of the needed plugin. Creating a private plugin is possible from the App Builder, so as you can see there is no option to create a plugin here. Lastly, there is the Account tab and we have already seen some of it. So after you sign up, you will be able to enjoy a two-week fully functioning pro plan for free as a trial to help evaluate the platform. You will be assigned the default admin role and will have access to the following tabs. Here you can modify your plan and profile, check your invoices and or work logs. Also the option of selecting the preferred social network if you would like to set up the social sign-in feature. Let's take a quick look at how you can manage a team in Apri.io. You can see that my team size is 4 and I have 3 seats available, so that means I can invite 3 other people to join my team and then I can give them different roles and then share other resources. This is how a team is built to be able to work on the app together. And you can have, of course, different people work on different apps or different databases, server code, scripts, and so on. So this is a pretty flexible way to collaborate with other developers. After your trial period expires, you will be asked to subscribe to one of our current plans. Once you are all set with your paid plan and your selected subscription is successfully activated, as a paid user, you will also get access to two additional tabs. Billing for managing your credit card and billing information, and support packs for purchasing one of our support pack services. Well, before we finish, let's very quickly go back to the apps page and open our app to see how you can import the backend services we have just created under the databases, server code, and API Express tabs. Now click Create New and select the backend service you need to add to the app. Then select the database to be added, we have only one listed now, then the needed services and confirm. In a moment you will see the checked services automatically imported to the app. The same flow can be applied when importing server code and API Express services. Of course, it does not necessarily need to be all three, but this is the way you connect the backend services to your Apri.io applications. Well, it looks like that's it for the platform dashboard overview. We have briefly covered all the Apri.io platform, and in our next video tutorial we will already start using the Visual App Builder. So subscribe to our channel to stay tuned. More videos are coming soon, and you need to make sure you won't miss them. Thank you for watching and happy developing.